literally just got a glimpse of what I'm wearing. Hold on, look. Muck boots. <laughs> oh, that's, that's funny. I mean, it's a thing, right? Muck boots and a dress. Y'all made fun of me in my last video because I was wearing jeans that had holes in them, but let me just tell you, jeans with holes in them is like farm girl AC. So, it's hotter today, so at least I'm wearing a dress, but I, I can't do sandals. It's gotta be muck boots. <laughs> Maybe we're gonna make this a thing, okay? <laughs> For you guys new to the channel, this is our apothecary. We have a good bit of herbs that we have foraged, we grow, we also ethically source, and yeah, and when we get to preserve them, um, like this one, horsetail, we found on our property and we freeze dried it. So I absolutely love being able to preserve the herbs for a length of time and look at these. These are the wild rose flowers that we did and that we did the other day. I'll put those videos down below if you guys are interested in learning about that. But today we need some more mint. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna go ahead and plan on harvesting a good bit of our mint because that thing is completely, my mint is untamable. Um, but before it goes to flower, I'd go, I'd like to go ahead and harvest a good bit, wash it, and then bring it back and load it up into the freeze dryer. So I need my baskets and I need my snips. I might end up grabbing all of these, really. But seriously, I think I've got a lot of mint. And this is just one bed. I also have um, this bed right here that also is full of mint, but I have to be careful because remember that little baby, the little baby, the little nest that we have in there with, with the mama and her, her little eggs. I had a lot of people ask about my bee veil that I'm wearing. Um, this came from my friend Mandy over at Bella Beak. I'll put the link down below if you guys are interested. It is a beekeeping veil. However, I found that it's been really awesome to wear while I'm up in the garden. It keeps the gnats out of my eyes. It also keeps the sun. Um, it, my face is kind of covered, you know, so I, I'm trying to protect my face, trying to protect all the things, obviously my skin. Um, but the gnats, I think, are my least favorite thing about gardening and they just come right at my eyes. So it is nice to wear a veil when you're up working in the garden and it's shade, you know? So, all right, I'm glad that we're doing this because I think if I were to have waited a little bit longer, all of my mint is probably gonna go to flower. So this is great, we're doing this now. So we got a good bit already. Um, I'm gonna take this back. We're gonna inventory because sometimes we get little pieces of grass. Um, so what we do is when we harvest anything, we will um, inspect it, make sure that there's nothing funky growing on it. And then I'm also going to go ahead and soak our mint. Um, I like a salad spinner too. And the reason is, is because you can get as much moisture off as possible. Uh, and then if there's anything, anything yucky like that, we will, we will go ahead and pull. Now I only harvested the tops of it because this is gonna come back. And with mint, the more that you harvest, the more that it grows. Oh, that almost made me want to jump because I thought something was on me. Anyways. Um, the other thing about mint that I have learned, yeah, it likes to spread. So if you are growing mint, don't do what I did. <laughs> I planted it in the ground when I first had a garden here and I thought that I eradicated the situation. Well, I did not plant any of this mint that we have growing in our raised beds. Um, so 
yeah. <laughs> Lesson learned, but at least we can use it. At least we're blessed with it. And then we're gonna preserve it. So well, I'm gonna take this back to the house. We're gonna wash it up. And then I'm gonna bring it back to the apothecary. The other thing that I'll add is I do get a lot of questions about our foraging baskets um, that I have when I harvest. These came second hand at a thrift store because I am all for buying used and saving money. Uh, I think I spent $7 on these baskets probably about eight years ago, <laughs> about that long. Um, but they've been my absolute favorite baskets. I, I don't know who makes them. Uh, I don't know really anything about them. I have three of them and they're all different sizes. Uh, if I have any basket maker friends, <laughs> Can somebody make me these? Uh, I love them. They're flat. They're great for drying, but you can see some of them have got some boo-boos on it. Um, but I also will hang them. Uh, sometimes I'll actually, I used to use these as my hanging baskets as well. I would put all my herbs on it and then hang them and dry them that way. So if I have any basket maker friends in the house, <laughs> I would love like a million <laughs> of these. Uh, is that too much to ask for? <laughs> okay, all right, let's go, let's, let's go wash these. I know, and mine, I want to, like, I want to know what it is. All on it. So, <laughs> all right, Mom and I were kind of going back and forth because... It doesn't I, really even have I a, think it's, I'm kind of curious because... we have a combination. I think so, too. So, I planted this mint about eight years ago in the ground, and then it decided to grow everywhere. I've already warned them to like. It's like tomatoes, Kaylee and Mint. Yeah, it did unintentional. Okay, you got to do the whole raptor thing. <laughs> so, what, what I can you? do? It's. Have you seen Children of the Corn? <laughs> <laughs> this is a child of the tomato. <laughs> ah. But I already warned them to make sure to like grow their mint in pots. Yeah, do it in a container and be careful. As you start to see the mint grow down mm -hmm. to the ground, it will attach itself. And next thing you know, we'll, you'll have 40 plants growing over here. Yes, and the more you harvest, the more it grows. It does. So learn, I learned, lesson learned. I will mm. never have to grow mint again. Um, but I also grew a lot of different varieties of mint. So I had chocolate mint, I had pineapple mint, I had mint mint, I had sphere mint. You had peppermint. Uh, or maybe did I already say pineapple? Did I already we say We have wintergreen. I had that. So we have mint and we don't know what it is, is what she's trying to say. It's mint. Okay? It identifies as mint because it's got that square stem. Yes. And it has a menthol-like yes. smell. Mm -hmm. um, it's very good for your digestive system. And we know we have spearmint growing on the back side right. of the house. And that looks a little different, but now I'm not even sure if that's really spearmint. I don't know. Anyways. There's this, thousands <laughs> of different types of mint. And we, we have, we have, we have feral mint is what we have. We do. It's the feral <laughs> mint. Um, honey so said mint. That's it what is, it is. It's honey. Maybe we made our own mint because of cross. Well, it's a science experiment. Um, ultimately though, mint, we use it for our digestive system. Um, and it's yeah. one of my grandmother's favorites. So I brought some in, I was gonna oh. try to, I was gonna try to get her up here, but she is hanging back today. Um, but we, I brought some in and I put some in a mason jar. Oh, it's and so good. She walked over and she just like, yeah. <laughs> it, it is so good. <laughs> it smells delicious. I like it. I, I don't mind it at all. You know, when you're doing like the typical black tea, iced yeah. tea. Um, this is wonderful in that. Um, 
or putting it in a jar and like just setting it out in the sun too mm -hmm. uh or just if you're drinking water mm -hmm. and you just put a sprig in it's just to me it's amazing but again we think we know it's mint okay we're gonna call it feral mint i like that okay i like that that's a thing we might have created our own mint we species. didn't create it the bees did well everything did but we're going to go ahead and plan on loading it up into the freeze dryer. Now, we're going to use the leaves. That is the main aspect mm. of the mint that you are, are going to use. The stem is usable too, except it's very woody. Um, we're, I've learned with the Harvest Right freeze dryer that if you... <laughs> it's kind of like the money catching game. You I know, know they blow like, the wind up, <laughs> we open it up and we find a lot of our, <laughs> our plant matter well flowers yeah the flat the petals yeah that's what it was on the uh on the roses, <laughs> the roses. it was like where'd they go in the tray and they're it's all like over the <laughs> so we're gonna leave them on the stem for the for moment. the actual freeze drying as well as the drying process and then um we are gonna hang dry some as well but when after it's dry all we're gonna do is just take our hand and just run it down the stem and then we'll take the stem discard it i'm kind of curious to see how this is going to work with the mm -hmm. stem yep. because it might break the stem but that would be okay too because the aerial parts are it, all usable right. in some way shape or form right it's not going to hurt us um if you mainly like if you're cooking with mint you don't want the stem because it is harder um, yeah. but you can use the leaves so we're going to load this thing we're going to load, load it, up. it up and i've got four mm. trays I will say that most people will pre-freeze things before they put it in the freeze dryer. I'm not going to do that. I, I don't want to. I don't want to do that. I'm fine. We're fine. Well, it's going to freeze fine. it anyway. It's, yeah. So might as well. It's fine. Um, and then whatever is left, left over, we're going to put it in the hanging basket that I have behind, which we will show you guys. But really, what I want you to see the difference. I want you to see the difference after they've both been dried. You're going to get the after of this portion, like once it's been freeze dry, and then the air drying, the hang drying is gonna take a couple of days. So bear in mind on that, it's you're not gonna get that right away from me. But you will get you will get the freeze dried portion of it. Well, they're gonna get it right away. Well, this, but not the not the oh, after. Oh, okay. I was like going to say, if you close out the video, I know. <laughs> then it'll so be longer. What I'll probably do is I'll post on my Instagram in a couple of, about a week or so. I'll okay. post on my Instagram. When and the, then you can get a picture side by side of like what air dried plants look like and what freeze dried. dried. Now, if you're new here, I'm going to just kind of fill you in. This is a Harvest Right freeze dryer. Elsa. Um, and her name is Elsa. I think that's fun. <laughs> but it's the freeze queen. If you guys are interested in purchasing your own Harvest Right freeze dryer, I do have an affiliate link. I will put that down below. The reason why we are choosing to freeze dry is because it literally will pull the moisture out of it, but leave it, leave all of the medicinal and, and the taste all of the properties right into the plant unlike dehydrating where you lose a portion of the medicinal properties of it as well as the taste and the smell and, and that's, you, you can you can literally see the freshness between yeah. the two and that's just natural it's not saying it's it's bad it's just it's i mean when you leave it out it's exposed to the air it's going to oxidize that's mm -hmm. what it's doing when it oxidizes the color changes a little bit but freeze drying but freeze drying preserves it at its most fresh state and then through that process called sublimation it takes the gas it, it, it takes the moisture and turns it into basically like a gas right and that's what freezes it that look i am not a scientist it's but i know cool. the word sublimation i've heard it before and it's I understand cool. it because I've seen it before, but trying to explain it, yeah. There gonna, are... I might not be completely 100% on that one, so... The main key aspect to why we're choosing to freeze dryer is, again, because the shelf life. Yeah. You know, I want to be able to preserve the food and the herbs, not just herbs. I mean, I do leftovers. We do refrigerator cleanouts at least once or twice 
We have so much leftover lasagna and spaghetti sauce. Because I cook, we cook lasagna the size of a small child, yeah. okay? We even um, got Thanksgiving dinner in there for at least six people now. Yeah, and we can so, eat it right in like within the next 25 years and it's still good. So know, that's crazy. I know, it is. Um, but I, I have a good bit of videos about the freezer and some of the things that we put in there. One of our latest ones that we did was horsetail. Yes. Um, and violets. Horsetail was beautiful. Um, but in short, this, I'm going to walk closer to the camera. Oh, yeah. All right. This is um, just dried horsetail, and this is freeze dried horsetail. So you can literally see the difference between between the two between the two and that's kind of the thought that's what we're trying well, to that's do. what that's part of what started whoa look at this oh yeah you know so i think it's awesome and then also when you're doing this you want to kind of review the plants real quick when you're laying it out and any leaf that you see that isn't necessarily ideal if now would be a good time to remove it yeah um, you want I the did. best quality that you can these look really good i know i clipped them and then I soaked them in water um, for a good hour, really. Good to go. Do I close it now? Yeah. And what she's talking about is a little valve that's on the side that I always tend to accidentally leave open. So we have to verbalize every time we close it. <laughs> because I've come up here, I've loaded it, and then I come up We're to check it, it, and the valve is not closed. And then I have to restart it. Lessons learned. Do you wanna check and make sure I close that? Right? Oh my. gratification right now oh yeah <laughs> I'll put a little fresh mint in my water and it tastes delicious and she also <laughs> added some of our freeze-dried I did I, well I did you can't see that it, it looks already like reconstituted it, already, it looks it looks brand new if you guys are curious about that I will put that video so you can see how we preserved and freeze-dried see if I can I don't want to put my hands on no. I'll just share that video okay okay be back all right so one of the projects I think my mom and I are both kind of working on and talking about is that first aid herbal kit. Right. And 
so when we start to look at the things that we have, it's like, would this make it in the kit? Yes, I think yeah. it would make it in the kit because not only does it offer a, a, a good taste, but it's, it's that anti-spasmatic, that carminative it just calms down the belly right and then and then if your belly upset is caused by eating something that's doesn't agree with you or even is bad then it helps to combat that uh oh we have leaves falling <laughs> i know it's a really crunchy oh i made a mess do you want the tray i'm always making a mess i'm okay with it this is actually really very i wonder if you can smell if it smells more Yep. Yes, mm. I can smell the mint. It's the mint is actually uh, much stronger, and this is a mild mint. There's properties in the mint that will help with that antimicrobial, your your gut health. Right. So, like if you eat something that might Have be that. a little questionable, it actually the antimicrobial and the antibacterial, some of those properties in the peppermint actually will help ease that and then also kind of neutralize, neutralize it, it. So, and kill those bad bacteria that are causing or could potentially cause other issues. So, so it's not just good for flavoring. It actually has some medicinal properties. Ah, look at this. Got a little, got a little smart here. See what I did? Mm -hmm. Picked up a whole handful and just pulling out the sticks now. That's smart. And mama didn't raise no fool. We're learning. Come learn with us. <laughs> Come be a part of our journey. We'll share our mistakes with you. A lots of mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the beauty of life. Yeah, it's messy. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful mistake sometimes is what's best. This is crazy. Look at all that. That's all the sticks. I'm blown away. I'm absolutely blown away. Okay, here we go. It's the last of it. It smells so good. It's very mild. Yeah. It's not like. It's not like super harsh. Hot. Yeah. Uh, that's where I think it's this hybridized. It would make sense. Oh, where's our peppermint that we have up here? Like to see, do a oh, comparison? comparison? Okay, let's do it. Um, so this, you got it right oh. here. So, I'm tired. I know. <laughs> All right, so this, I just want you to see a comparison of the dried, this is just dried peppermint, and then this is freeze dried. So you can literally see the difference of the two. This was one of the reasons why this thing has been on my bucket list for the last like five years. And yes, you can do other forms of drying, but this was one of the reasons why, um, by, uh, by actually visually seeing the difference. This is almost as perfect as fresh. Mm -hmm. It almost makes me more determined to grow additional medicinal oh, yeah. plants and just this is our part of our way of not only... I need to get her into the garden and show her all the things that have been I, growing. Well, yeah, I know. I've been, I've, been, I've been busy doing my other work. That's okay. We're so. showing, we're doing, we're growing and we're foraging and we're doing the things that, that we can um, in the time that we have. So, yeah. So if you were to if you were to basically harvest everything of the mint that you have right now, how many more jars would you get? Probably at least five. Crazy. Five more jars, and then it would all re continue to grow because yeah, you just gave it a head start. Oh yeah, it's gone. It's definitely going to continue to grow. So we're going to do this again with a lot of the other plants. I definitely think leaving your plants on the stem. If it's a woody stem like that, whether it's your holy basil, lemon balm, skull cap, cat mint, um, oh gosh, all of the things. Leave it on your stem. I think it's gonna be easier. That literally came off well, like that, nothing. And the stems, 
No, oh, they have, they absolutely, you right. can use them too. Most it's leaf. Most is leaf. Um, most forms are leaf. But anyways, thank you guys for coming on this adventure with us. Yes. As we preserve some of our peppermint, really it's honey stead mint at this point. Yes. But did you show them what the dried mint looks like right it's now? It's not dried yet. Oh, it's, it's still not still, dried. It's still floppy looking. So okay, couple, couple, little while. What I'll probably do is, if you guys are on my Instagram, I will do a good comparison picture between the two so that you guys can kind of see it and follow along with what we're doing. Um, I mean, this is beautiful. Oh yeah, but, but that's that's just lovely. There's no comparison. So, all right. Thank you guys for coming along with us. And as always, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and learn something old. Bye guys. Bye.